The Borderlands franchise wouldn't be what it was if guns, those purple and orange beams of light that gives everyone enough boner fuel to Mars and back, weren't such a giant staple to the series. Guns in Borderlands is basically synonymous to jawbreakers in Ed, Ed and Eddie, but I have ventured far and wide, partaking in an abysmal amount of gunless expeditions, searching across this real estate called the video game world for the perfect manly patty cake session. By the end of this run, not only will we understand the meaning of this universe, but also the thought process behind someone who wipes while standing up. Today, we will answer a question no sane person has ever asked. Can you beat Borderlands without guns? This question has never been asked because not one sane person would ever dare partake in such a sport. And if they did, they'd probably be playing Hentai Sniper Middle East on the Steam store. Like, like why in the heck is this a game? <laughs> who the f*** allowed this shit? So before we partake in this Olympic performance, let's discuss the rules of this episode of Senza Answers Bizarre Questions. Rule 1. Obviously, guns cannot be used at all this run. I can only brandish the one thing I know. My fists grenades, and a lead pipe. I can use any means to kill my enemies, whether that be running them over, giving them a taste of a grenade, or pummeling them to death. Using a gun, though, will disqualify me from this challenge. Rule 2. Shield mods can be used, but nothing higher than purple rarity. Also, shields that explode while taking damage can be used. Rule 3. You're looking goddamn rather dashing today in that new t-shirt and haircut. I I just wanted to say that. Like, seriously, you look, wow, you look great. And lastly, Rule 4. Put on your Shinobi Alliance headband and gather around this weenie roast. As I tell you guys about the story when Papa Snaxa fisted the entire population of Pandora for the entertainment of his viewers. This will not be an easy journey, and many deaths were had. So make sure to kissing prank that like button, spit on that sub button, and saddle up boys as we ride into the sunset to partake on this crusade. Before this run starts, we must first get past the intro sequence without singing along. This has been deemed a difficult feat by many, but my iron will and fortitude of a fedora wearing gentleman waiting till marriage for his first kiss will aid me in getting past this very part. Deciding on my character was an easy choice. We will be picking our testosterone omelet, the one, the only, Brick, aka Marcus. Brick is a force not to be reckoned with. His action skills give him two booty meat tenderizers. This man alone makes hardcore porn look trivial with his fisting capabilities. Right off the bus, as always, we are greeted with Claptrap, and I've done this so many times that I'm lucky I haven't gotten the clap yet. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. you get it guys not even 10 minutes into this run I realized that this was going to be straight up gerbil ass going from Borderlands 3 movement to Borderlands 1 is almost life-changing It felt as though I was attempting to run through a pool of strawberry jam and straight-up dog farts But a majority of this was ameliorated when I found out that I could cosplay as chief Wiggums from the Simpsons This cosplay will enable my capability to lay justice to the land of Pandora bringing swift deaths and pounding holes so large It could fit the entire circumference of a test Tesla truck. After throwing on my costume and naming myself after a commenter with a bright future, and I know he will have an amazing and prosperous life and will always be happy and is super good looking and will have an amazing marriage, it was now time for Claptrap and I to enter Pandora's womb and cleanse the filth that has coated this land. After witnessing a couple of dudes flexing their cool cars and micro penises, it was time to get to action. My first glimpse of the reality of this run was absolutely breathtaking. The euphoric sensation of pounding my enemies with a lead pipe dildo felt great, but a few things were just incredibly off-putting. For example, the first thing to ruin my mood. The realization that I couldn't turn barrels into projectiles in the first Borderlands. I learned this the hard way, and I will say immediately, this got me incredibly soft. Shortly after that, I made my second realization. I now knew how my grandmother felt when I showed her my YouTube channel. While in Last Stand, you couldn't move. Even your camera movements are suppressed to that of a patient in a geriatric ward. Other than those two gripes though, I was feeling great. My 15 pounds of lead slapping my enemy faces were more than enough to get my nipples back on track to getting to harder than bedrock. Firestone was now cleansed of the vermin that many like to call bandits with a medicine I like to call death. After a quick diaper change for my boy Claptrap, I got a call that a couple naughty little turds were in a town nearby. I also heard that they were breathing, and in the Senza cinematic and manga universe, you know, the one where Randy Pitchford didn't make a tweet about him, this was the highest level of crime. Stop. My masculinity milkshake brick was feeling like a great pick this run. I haven't played this game in a while, but as long as flying enemies 
didn't molest me later on in the playthrough, this was going to bode quite well. I roleplayed as electrician fixing all the med vending machines in Firestone so Zed could get his steroid injections and went to the man himself, 2019's GQ front page magazine model, TK Baja. This gold bonds foot powder looking head ass wanted me to grab him some food for a quest, but little did I know that he was actually inviting me to a dinner with a 5 star meal of ass pounding on the menu. But of course, as always, they stood no chance against the man that unlocked the hidden chi behind Shroud's gaming prowess. His grocery shopping was complete, and the next quest involved something that really gave me a big sperm, the quest to unlock grenades. Grenades are going to be a giant staple this run, so once he gave me that quest you already know I completed that shit instantly. Although unfortunately for some reason I wasn't able to throw the grenades I was given. Instead of throwing those little balls of explosives, I was throwing up little vault hunter gang signs. I wasn't very sure why my grenades weren't working, but I shrugged it off as a glitch and proceeded on my way to nine tits. On my way to the first boss fight I was blessed from the heavens, a gift only given to the chosen. I now had my action skill, which turned me into an interplanetary ass clapping destroyer of cheeks, 325 pounds packed behind every punch. My athletic stature turned each of my meat swings into a speeding bullet. Before I show Nine Tits my unfathomable power, let's discuss the plan, gentle boys and girls. Operation I'm out of toilet paper so I have to use the cardboard roll is now in full effect. I know you gym hounds are ready for this Amazon Prime one day delivery of mud flap annihilation, but before we can continue, we gotta set up a roadmap. Our goal this run is running it down Brick's left tree. If we want to ascend into full Bruce Lee, if we want to fully become a true one punch man, we must fill out this entire tree. Fortunately, this run only involves the brain power of a rock, so this shouldn't be too bad compared to the horrors and the and, and the torture that, that I went through my last vi- You're being stupid for being scared of- SHUT UP! Okay, you you know, let's just get back to the scheduled broadcast. Nine tits was just around the corner, and not a bit of worry dazzled my mind. I entered the arena, and in no time, I gave our man that 10-piece combo meal with an extra large Diet Coke. He stood no chance against my fisting technique, one that has been taught to me by Shaolin monks. With his consent, of course, since, I, you know, I'm, I'm a gentleman, I fisted him, and he died. It was time to return to our boy TK Baja. I first had to do something that is very special to this channel, because who else does doesn't enjoy being inundated by feces and AIDS and quests that needed to be cited. A few side quests and about a gallon of depression later, which by the way, I'll be drinking a lot of that this run, I was now a high enough level to kill Bonerhead and get Scooter, his catcher ride, up and running. My first attempt at fighting him, this man straight up used me like some Listerine morning mouthwash. I couldn't even get close before Bonerhead hit me with some sort of Naruto hidden lotus shit and tore me a new stinker. This led me to adapting and finding new ways to send this boy into kindergarten timeout. Out. My method of adapting was finding out why the f grenades still didn't work. After restarting the game and even making a new character because I thought my save was glitched, a friend and I performed a full-fledged diagnosis on the situation and attempted to figure it out. The biggest boomer mechanic I have ever seen in my existence rested in this game. And I'm talking more boomer than vats in Fallout. I'm gonna need to warn you guys to grab that package of Pampers 360 Cruisers and throw that diaper on for this one because goddamn it's literal shit. This game was designed to only allow you to throw grenades if there was a gun in your hand. I couldn't believe it. They literally coded this game to make sure that you always had a gun equipped it. In my disbelief, I said fuck it and decided to cross swords with Bonerhead once again, but only using my fists. Hiding and waiting for my ult to come up was my only option, and even this barely did it. Though, after giving him a nice enema that composed of merely my fists, I was able to show Dickhead here that I was the true big boss and got my Digistruct module. With my 3D printing module now up and working for everyone to use, I pirated a vehicle and 3D printed it, which was nice seeing that it worked for once. Last time I tried doing that, I literally got a Dexter's Laboratory and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends hentai virus on the family living room computer, and that is a true story. <laughs> I got grounded so goddamn hard. Running it straight down the fisting tree was actually going great, and I was thoroughly enjoying this. The excitement in my nipples was beyond what I expected. After feeling and becoming quite opulent from those side quests, and you know, probably moderating 14 titty streamers Twitch chats, which equates to my current level and white knight points, it was time to kick Sledge out of headstone. My performance here was absolutely beautiful. Textbook execution, straight up expertly played and never before seen. My mental tension and focus on getting Sledge's key 
key allowed me to straight up tear the wiggle bags off of every single bandit that even came into my line of sights. I was dying a lot, but hey, that's not what matters on this show. Until it did matter. The enemy at the end of this warehouse was a roid rage psycho, and holy f this wasn't going to be possible at my current level. With my action skills active, I may as well be kissing him with every punch I threw. So I backtracked and did a few more side quests. This was the best idea I had all year because after farming a few runescape worms, I got a buff on my action skill that not only gave me the power of a train behind every punch, but also the power of Zeus himself. My condom was fastened and secured, and it was time to 2009 WWE Rey Mysterio Smackdown these turd riders. Not one person in my path stood a chance, and you know that Roid Raid Psycho? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you idiot. That raid boss of Cupcakes and Sunshine was now dead, and with the key now mine, so was Sledge. Getting to Sledge was easy. After many deaths and straight up brute forcing Sledge's mainframe to get into his Twitter DMs, I was here on a play date. The plan was to straight up face fuck him with my two meat slabs. I wasn't sure if it was going to totally work out or not, but I was going to try. The first couple of attempts didn't go so well, but I eventually found a cheese I could use on him. The so called Brad Pitt of gaming, an intellectual, a scholar, to cheese a boss? <laughs> Sounds like Get out of here! I know you guys probably feel this way about me, but listen, I never said I couldn't cheese. But also, come on, Sledge is an OP operator. I had to do it. I now had the first Volt Key piece in my possession, and Commandant Swampass threatened me with a spanking if I didn't return it. I'm a bad boy doing good things, baby. So you know, I wasn't going to be doing that. Firestone was ready to be left behind, and spread my big dick energy across the wastes of Pandora. My next quest involved me saving Ernest, and the only way for me to accomplish that objective was to clear out a group of enemies that resided high up and out of reach of my fists. But with a little award-winning throw, I was able to blow the Jiggle Twins right off of their rears and complete the objective. Of course, now it was time to do something that I am 100% not a stranger of, and that is side quest. These little bad boys got me butterflies in my panties, and got me wetter than when the cutest boy in school asked me to a prom dance. One of the quests had me attempt to take down a patrol of vehicles, which seemed almost damn near impossible with only my fists and grenades. So I decided to skip that side quest and go on to complete the others. Progress Passing down my compendium of monotonous quests and fisting 42 foot meteor craters into the medicine balls of a few guardians, I was embraced with terrible news. That terrible casserole of aids, perpetual insanity, and vehicles that needed to be destroyed with only my fists was actually a story mission. It just didn't seem possible. I could chase them down in circles and still they would never stop. Flexing their super cool cars and micro peens actually worked and brought me down as a human being. My ego, my self-esteem, everything was dropping at a massive rate and just me approaching them would result in them hitting that Flintstones NOS button and yabba dabba do out of that bitch. I was going to have to stand up to these chads though. Guerrilla warfare was my only option. Woo! Get shit on! Get fucking dick, pussy! Yes! Woo! Yeah! Ugh. Woo! That shit was easy as heck, boys. Let's fucking go! Like, goddamn! You know, my little brother was actually the one dying in all of those scenes. I killed these runners first try, baby. Like, mm. Oh, okay, the... The next boss fight is literally a giant vehicle. God, come on, man. Mad Mel literally brought me to levels of mental darkness that I have never seen before. This fight was actually a load of steaming hot creamy burrito shit. The first set of vehicles, eh, not too bad. I can deal with that. And then the goddamn raid boss of Omega Chads himself shows up with his epic whip and 50 hot girls that want to fuck him on a daily basis and showed me what dirt tasted like. I finally just decided to equip a weapon and throw one grenade. Literally one grenade and I one-shotted him, thus making me the god of all gamers because that shit was easy as hell, baby. What the fuck did I tell you? Being as good as me, you would understand why I'm vilified from every single video game championship and tournament. Mel was dead and I got to Claptrap. Of course, I was hit with a fine Tannis at the Dig Yard mission, typical of Gearbox to copy and paste straight up quests from every single game. But this was okay. I was going to look past that because the vault was now almost mine. Not much happened during this sequence of the game. Tannis told me to find Durl. I found him 
him, did a few quests for him, and when I say few, I actually mean a, f a f ton of quests. Now it was time to hit up Krom for the next piece of the vault. Being under leveled but still pursuing the potential death of Krom was quite a terrible idea. The problem was, at this point I was nearly ready to overdose on side quests, and the fact that I haven't really had any fist on asshole action recently really put me into a state of eternal heat. I'll tell you guys now that I was 100% not ready for this fight, and Borderlands could go suck a cow udder full of acidic tip milk for all I care. Seeing Krom kill off a poor little claptrap was the only thing that honestly kept me going at this point. I probably would have given up. Unfortunately for Needle Dick, he wasn't aware of the sport of fisting, which is odd because in this day and age, it is basically a household name. Either way, Krom got what he deserved for hurting one of my YouTube subs, and I was rewarded with another piece of the vault. This was when I was introduced to Taylor Cobb, aka the lesser of Taylors here, since I am the better one. Which, fun fact, my real name is actually Taylor, and throughout all of high school, my nickname was Taylor Todd. But either way, just this Taylor's presence triggered a fire in my boners. I wasn't going to let him slide having my name. Before I could marry my fist to his asshole though, I first had to take out his brother. Taking out Taylor's brother took quite a few deaths and a bit of time, but eventually my fists were able to get what they were craving for. Turns out I f***ed up and Helena Pierce told me that the lesser Taylor is now a tyrannical leader. So with the diaper booty gang by my side, it was time to give this imposter a little spanking. Taylor was now a goner and it was time for the next piece of the puzzle. My next task was my true test of strength, to see if I was ready for what awaited me in the vault that I would soon open. My ancient scripts and gamer Elder Scrolls speak of a boss, a queen of queens. Its mere sight was capable of scaring away any brave warrior that would come into its path. A doctrinaire of pain and misery. A repressive, vile, disgusting leader that- oh, oh okay, there, that was easy. What the f Now all I needed was the last piece of the puzzle, and this crusade would be over with. The last vault key piece resided with a man named Baron Flint. Of course, getting to him involved me doing something that literally made me want to grind my ball sack into a fine paste, but it had to be done. After spending nearly 40 minutes dealing with this headache and wanting to take two steps off a one-step cliff, it was time to find Flint and take him down. I ran my man tits off, punching my way through the King of Kings stronghold, the man that no one dare spoke of, a man that was feared by the masses. Even stepping in his line of sight would result in your house being foreclosed and sued for taxidermy fraud. The one thing every human on this planet is scared of, and no one- Oh, okay. I guess just like that, I entered the dragon karate punched off Flint's nipples, and that was the second to last boss now completed. Tannis ended up betraying me, and I wasn't going to forgive that poopy head. On my way to Tannis, some weird dude named Master Cloud was trying to get to know me, and unfortunately, he got his turds pushed in. Begging Tannis to forgive me and give me access to my Tinder and AOL accounts back was quite easy, and not only did she give me access to those accounts back, she gave me a corrosive upgrade for my fists. I was now the offspring of a weird threesome between Saitama, Iron Fist, and Bruce Lee. With this new corrosive buff, each of my swings now packed a punch equivalent in strength to getting grounded by your mother for two months with no video game or computer access. Yeah, that's how OP I was. Literally every single enemy in my path didn't even stand a chance. It was time to find the commandant before she got to the vault with my key pieces. Honestly, the ending sequence of the game was incredibly easy. I don't think I actually died once. The guardians literally stood no match for me, and because my skill tree was completely maxed out, I had my action skill up every 30 seconds. Things got ugly, and so did Steel's men and the guardians. God bless the fact that there weren't any buzzards or flying bosses in this game, because if there was, I'd be totally screwed. After literally taking out almost every creature on Pandora with my fist, I finally got to Swamp Ass. Unfortunately, she died in a freak tentacle porn hentai accident, but thanks to her deaths, I was able to learn from her mistakes and make sure it didn't happen again. The tentacle beast took my fist like a champ, and even though I barely did any damage to her, she tipped her fedora and I tipped my 10 gallon hat, which resulted in the vault beast getting sent back into her vault. You can beat Borderlands 1 without guns. The beginning of the challenge was difficult, but after ascending into an interplanetary being, I was able to zoom through the game and punish all that came into my sights. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and tickle that like button, and if you really enjoyed it, fist that sub button. If you feel like supporting me or the channel, hit that join button and join the diaper booty military. I think I set up some pretty cool perks and would love to hear what you guys think of it. Of course, it all isn't needed though. Just dropping a view is all that matters to me. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and keep smiling because remember, you are all beyond beautiful. See you guys in the next video and I hope you have a great day.